quiet December evening, what better place is there to be as people of the kingdom? Did you notice this? Advent kind of comes and wraps its arms around us. God takes it, he gently leads his children. He takes us by the hand and by the heart and by the life. And he gently leads us to the places that he knows that we need to be, that are blessing for us, that are good for us. And he brings us into the season of Advent and lets us walk in the season of Advent and move through it in such a way that life in some ways, while it speeds up out in the world, it, it slows down for us. Oh, I'm not talking about the activity of life. I'm talking about the pace of our hearts. The, the very fabric of our souls, how God just brings us in and as He gently and lovingly prepares us for the coming of our Savior. He helps us as His people to set aside some of the things that are troubling us or distracting us or distressing us. and He lets us settle on things that are, that are holy and righteous and good and, and rich. He brings us back home again to what, to what really matters in our lives. He knows, and because He loves us so very much, He knows. He knows how easy we are to be distracted or, or turned away or, or lost in some of the things of the ordinariness of life. In living in a broken world as broken people. God knows that. So December comes, these quiet December evenings, and he gathers us together. And he lets his arms, the arms of Advent, just wrap around his children. Have you noticed that at this most joyful time of the year, lots of people aren't? Not, not a few, not some, lots of people up. Maybe, maybe, it's the, maybe it's the weight of life. Maybe it's, maybe it's just the regular, ordinary, day-to-day -day things of life that tend to pile up on people's shoulders and hearts and minds in such a way that it pushes joy out or never lets it in. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I know this is true. As I watch, as I walk and I watch, do you know this? Not just some. Lots of people aren't. So the question, the question tonight is this. Is it possible, is it possible to have joy even when life is challenging? When life is difficult, when it pushes us up against the wall, when it's in a, in a hard place? Is it possible? Is it possible to have real joy when life is really challenging? Well, to get to the answer, let's start here. That that kind of joy, the kind of joy that stands up no matter what, is not found by people like us where we are most apt to look. We're not loved ones. We're not going to find it in ourselves. <laughs> no matter how deep we dig, or how hard we try, or how judicious we are, no matter how much we look into ourselves, like the world sometimes tell us, tells us, no matter how much we, we look in here and reach in here and grab in here, we're not going to find it in here. You know, you can't get pure water from a tainted well. We're not going to find it in here. We're not going to find the kind of joy that's going to last in the world around us either. <laughs> Although you know, I hope you know, it's not what we're told or sold, or marketed to about. If there's anything the world shouts, especially at this time of year, is that it has all <coughs> kinds of sources where people like you and I can find things that will just make us joyous. And you know, I hope you know, we can go down every cotton pick and aisle in every store in Lexington and look at every shelf, grab into every shelf, Every rack, every full thing, we can, we can reach anywhere we want to reach. And though the world tells us that, that's where we'll find it, you know. We may find big credit card bills and hangovers and wish we hadn't, but we won't find joy. Not the kind that's going to last. In fact, it is so remarkable to me about me well, about you too. About how hard that lesson is to learn for us. It's like we go to school and go to school and go to school. It's a kindness of the Lord and He teaches us and teaches us and teaches us and yet we go right back around. Sin not only makes us stupid, it makes us poor learners. 
It's over and over again in our lives. Some of us get old, but we don't get smarter. Not in this way. Over and over again in our lives. Don't you see this? We will, we will be trying to find this elusive thing that we want so very much. We want to have joy, and we're looking for it in, as the country song said, in all the wrong places. We'll go back again and again, and yet God is patient with us because he loves us so very much. And so he teaches in these sinful hearts and these broken lives, and he teaches, and, and then he teaches again, and he teaches again. God speaks to us in ways that, well, listen, that teach us that our source, our real source, our only source is the Lord himself. He's the only one that can give the kind of joy that we're talking about. And listen to it tonight. It's the joy that comes from knowing that He cares about us. He cares about our hearts and our souls. He cares about our minds and our bodies. He cares about our yesterdays and our todays and our tomorrows. God cares about where we're at and what we're going through and what life is like for us and what we're struggling with and what's hard for us and why the valley is so deep and the mountain so high. God cares about all of that. And when you and I, by the power of the Holy Spirit, when we come to know that in our lives, it becomes this wondrous venue for God to give us joy. The kind that really matters and really lasts. On top of that, listen, it's the joy of knowing that we, you and I, we're his own. He chose us. He selected each one of us. He loved you and me from his heart and eternity with his life. He redeemed us. He claimed us. He gave us a place in his family. Listen to me tonight. You and I, we are precious to him. When we know that, when that settles in here inside of you and me, it just grows up this wondrous sense of joy. In fact, it's God's gift to us. In the midst of life, with all the life entails, because his love for you and me is strong and certain and ongoing in Jesus, he wants his children in the midst of life, with all that life entails, he wants us to have this deep and abiding, rich joy from him. In fact, the Bible tells us, listen to this. The Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is God's people's strength. Whatever life may hold for us. You see, it's not vulnerable to the weather of our lives. Here's how you tell the real thing from the false thing. False joy is like this. When life is floating along, when it's going good, oh, I'm joyful. And as soon as, as soon as the weather turns around and things go backwards the wrong way, that kind of joy, that phony joy that the world offers us, that just goes floating out the window. I'll say this to you again, listen. The joy that the Lord gives us in this one whose name is Jesus is the kind of joy that is not vulnerable to the weather of our lives. It's here. It's here where life is good. And it's here where life is not so good. It is, it is this wonderful window through which you and I, as God's children, can see our living. So I was thinking about this for the last few days. I knew it was coming. You didn't, but I did. I'm thinking about this in my head and in my heart and in my life. And I'm kind of watching the flow of things in my life. I'm watching how the day goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down. And this day was really good and the next day not so much and the next day pretty good and the next day not so much. And in the middle of that, I'm thinking to myself, but am I joyful? 
Is there inside of me something that stays stable and strong and real? When life is up here, and when it's down here, not something I can take off a shelf or buy on a, online or, or see on the television or read in a newspaper, but something, something that comes from the God who has created me and recreated me and made me his own, something that is, that is solid and divine and eternal. And I'm looking at my life and I'm thinking, yes, yes. Today God cares about me. He cares about how I feel. He cares about what I'm going through. He cares about the fabric of my life, the highs of my life, the lows of my life. God cares about me. And I am. Through Jesus, I am his own. Whatever the, whatever the fabric of my life at any given moment, this doesn't change. I am his own. Gosh, that gives me joy. In the best moments, in the worst ones too, it just gives me joy. Everything you just heard from me, I want you to know, loved ones, is just as true in your life too. Tonight, I suspect, it's not a very big reach. I suspect there are some who walk through the church doors tonight. And tonight, you came in here with maybe a smile on your face and the middle of the week behind you and, well, all the stuff of your life. I suspect, too, that some of you came tonight and joy was the last thing that is part of your living because somehow in the midst of life, with all the things that are going on in your life, it somehow slipped away or you can't find it. You can't put your hand on it. You can't, you can't put your heart on it. Listen, child of the kingdom. Listen. God cares about you. He cares about who you are and where you are. He cares about your heart and your soul and your struggle and your life. He cares about you. In Bethlehem, there was a manger. It pointed directly to a cross. Right after the cross, there was a tomb. Every one of those, every one of those, for every one of us. He has claimed us and renamed us, made us his children. We we are his own. And the joy, the joy that comes with that, loved ones, the world can't take away from us. By God, it will try. But it can't. You hear me tonight? It can't. That's why the joy of the Lord as his people, it gives us strength. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I know that I'll step in it like you will, into this great sea of the unknown. I know this too. Do you? That there is a joy that grows up in the people of God so that the unknown of tomorrow, whatever it holds, whatever it holds, is no bigger than, no stronger than, no more victorious than the God that you and I belong to. It makes us, it makes us strong. There is for us, well, there is this. Is it possible? Is it possible to have joy when life is challenging? I guess the world would say, well, probably not. But we, we have a whole different view. You see, we're God's people and he is our source. In fact, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Listen to it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Is it possible? 
<laughs> yes, indeed. I want you to hear tonight, loved ones. Yes, indeed. On this Advent evening, this is the teaching of the Lord. If you would rise, please.